Hey, everybody. Um, I, I would love to say that I'm here by accident, but this is well planned. Um, that's Maria. Hi, Maria. How you doing? <laughs> doing all right. How are you? Maria kicks kipping, kicking over rocks and finding magical treasure. The problem is a lot of times she kicks over rocks and there's rabbit holes. Case in point, you did a reaction to Electric Cowboy and Baby Metal. Mm -hmm. Now, you've been embraced by the Electric Cowboy community, but Baby Metal isn't a community. It is a living, breathing force. Almost Marvel Universe level force. <laughs> True facts. And I know that the second you posted that reaction, which I loved, by the way, because it's all about the disco ball. I agree. I agree. Um, the m baby metal uh, movement, I guess, the, the fox god faithful. You're going to learn this, by the way. This is not the sign of the devil. See how it does this? Mm -hmm. It's because it's a fox. And okay. in Japan, it's the fox god. So this is like, how they, like that? it's like this. Instead of like this, it's like this. That's the fox god. Okay, okay, so right there, right there, you are doing way better than I did when I first discovered this band. You learned that. I didn't know what this was for like two years. Okay, so baby metal is what was referred to as kawaii metal. Okay, and what kawaii metal is, kawaii is the Japanese word for cute. That's cute. Exactly. Like that. That's the point. So now the way it started was, I don't know if you're aware of this, but in Japan, um, they take their entertainers, dancers, singers, musicians to a whole nother level. In the Japanese culture, if you're going to do something, you don't just pursue it. You pursue it to its ultimate perfection. And that's Japanese culture. If you're going to do mm -hmm. something, do it well. I wish we did that more, but we don't. So these kids that have talent, you know, like singing, musicianship, dance, they literally enroll in schools, academies, to perfect their dance and whatever. When they graduate these schools, they get picked up by organizations and producers and things and agencies, and literally they, they're put into groups, like K-pop bands, J-pop <laughs> bands, right? Think of it like when Justin Timberlake and Lance Bass left the Disney Channel, they got stuck with those other guys and they became in sync because of a producer that put them all together and then took them on this crazy journey. You're familiar with that, obviously. Yes. Japan takes it another step further. So there's this academy and originally it started with some very, very, very young girls, 10 and 11 years old. Their names are Sue Metal, S-U-I, do not say Sui. I did that. Oh, still, I'm still getting yelled at for that. Sue Metal is the oldest. She is the main vocalist. She's the one that when you did the, the song, the reaction to Electric Cowboy, she was the tallest and she did mm -hmm. most of the vocal singing. Yeah. Then you had originally Moa Metal. They're called Sue Metal, Moa Metal, and then there's a third, okay? The original third was a young lady by the name of Yui. Yui, Y-U-I metal. She was the most adorable little thing you've ever seen. She was the tiniest and the cutest little thing ever. They originally started as baby metal, as a trio of young vocalists and dancers with a band behind them. Mm -hmm. Now, you've seen the modern iteration where it's now Sue Metal as a 20-something-year-old adult vocalist who's outstanding Moa Metal is still there, but they're joined by a third, a new third member called Momo Metal. And so Moa Metal and Momo Metal are primarily dancer performers, but they do backing vocals. Now, they do There's dress up. There's a lot up, of information going on here. And I'm not even scratching surface. I'm just so giving you the general. I'm just, Moma and Momo. Exactly. Just go with it. Okay. Just, if you just call them baby metal, it's fine. Just say, oh my God, they're so cute as baby metal. You're fine. So, but it started off with Sue Metal, Moa Metal, and Yui Metal when they were like 10 and 11 years old. Super young, super. And they were, because they were 10 and 11, they were wearing these little baby girl dresses with pigtails and they were super cute and super Hello Kitty, right? Super mm -hmm. kawaii. And they took that 
And instead of making them a J-pop band, right? Bubblegum pop, like you would expect from that. Yeah. No, they stuck the most insanely talented in musicianship metal band in all of Japan. A band known as the Kami Band. Now, these were professional musicians of, of masterful. They're like Dragon Force level, like Dream Theater, like... Okay. When it comes to metal, no joking around, right? But the guys from the Cami band would dress in all white and they'd wear white fate paint, fate face paint to represent ghosts. So you had a bunch of dudes playing ridiculously fast, loud metal music with three, yes. with three adorable young children up in front dancing and skipping and super happy cuteness. When this came about in 2014, they took over Japan almost immediately because nothing had ever been done like it. I, they became popular in the United States in 2016 when they started to kind of get global rec recognition. And the first video we're gonna check out is around that time where the baby metal phenomenon became viral. This was in 2016. Your introduction to baby metal, which all of baby metal's fans will tell you, you have to do gimme chocolate first. However, rather than you, rather than you do the one at the Budokan or the official one from Japan, I'm going to ease you in. You're an American. So am I. When they came to the United States, they did an introduction to the American public on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Okay. As his musical guest. Even, okay. St even Stephen Colbert was not ready for baby metal. And I don't think you are either. You got a good visualization, and because Electric Cowboy kind of eased you in, that was part of it. But remember, you saw them as adult ladies. The level of cuteness and the level of hilarity of the cami band behind them is going to shock the system. After you get this first introduction reaction going, I, you're going to have questions. Are, okay. you, are you ready for this first introduction to the origins of this f global phenomenon known as baby metal? Whew. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> okay, you got, okay, I'll be here when you get back. Have a good time. All right. All right, guys, so I'm getting the education here from old school. If you're not following him, make sure you do. Uh, we are going to check this song out. You already know if you want to show love and support to the artist and or myself, in the description box, bio link, merch link, check them all out. I'm just saying. Okay, we're going to check this out. See what kind of questions I have for, for my boy old school. Let's go. I'm not sure what I'm about to see. <laughs> but I'm pretty excited about it. Here to perform Gimme Chocolate, please welcome... Baby metal. funny about this is that they look like cute little girls and they're singing like cute little girls and then you have all of the intensity behind them 
even their choreography is just adorable, but it all works. It, and I've only only done one other song from them with Electric Cowboys, and I gotta say, <laughs> uh, I understand what old school was saying. You know that I'm getting to see them in their adult years, not in the you know more younger years, and it's definitely a different vibe. It's a completely different vibe. That's insane, and. They can sing and they can dance and they are very entertaining. And then it's like the unexpected is all of the intensity that is right behind them. <laughs> it's so cool to see that. Um, I want to know, like, so they started at a very young age, but when exactly did they start working together as a group, like, before they, like, came on stage? Like, that's what I might have to ask old school because we have these girls and they're very well coordinated and they understand what they're doing very well on stage. Like how long were they together before they actually made a public appearance? so stinking cute. <laughs> so are they supposed to be like little like machine guns just shooting out chocolate or something with the that they're doing? I, I don't know. It, it <laughs> this is adorable. Um, it, it's like they're like little dolls and I just want to like hug them and squeeze them they're so stinking cute um so because yeah like i see her she has like a little gun like she's doing this number right and it's like a gun right am i getting that right i feel like that that they're that, the, the, that they're doing is the the little gun thingy that's a uh, oh my gosh they're so cute i can't even it's like so stinking adorable it's like cuteness overload right now and then all of a sudden they're a rock band they're a metal band it's so cute Oh my goodness. Oh my God. Her album, Metal Resistance, is out now. Baby Metal, everybody. We'll be right back. Look at how adorable they are. Oh my gosh. That was so stinking cute. Okay, we got to get back with, with, uh, 
with old school on this one. Let's see. So you're back. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. How, how was that? It was so stinking cute. It was like cuteness overload. And then you're hit with like these intense, like musicality, these guys in the background just playing their hearts out. And these girls are just like, hi, I'm so cute. And it's like, give me, give me chocolate. I just want the chocolate. Can I have some chocolate, please? Thank you. Thank you. Please. And thanks. And it's like, this is too stinking cute. And it's like, I'm seeing them do like, I guess this number. And I'm like, yeah. is that supposed to be like a little gun? Yes <laughs> like, and no. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where the level of cuteness doesn't, some of it, has a very distinct purpose. Anytime you see the fox symbol, yes. Um, but sometimes it's just the dance moves. And again, Yui and Moa, the original two dancer slash screamers, uh, mm -hmm. the, the, they do the chants and the callbacks. Um, mm -hmm. Their dancing is incredible. In fact, Moa is known to be Moto Moa, Moa or Power Moa because she's also Buff Moa because her dancing prowess and her strength are ridiculous um okay. so that was the first exposure for americans to the level of cuteness and musicianship for baby metal now this is your also your first interaction to the cami band which has been their backing band since 2014 those were the guys you saw i'm sure you saw the one that was bald playing the bass yes he's very predominant because he's very animated his name is bo b-o-h now Remember that. And the reason why you need to remember that is because if you call him Doe, like I did for a year, I still get messages on my old baby metal reactions from three and a half years ago going, his name isn't Doe, it's Bo. In fact, I would get like videos made of me that I'm an idiot. There's a video on YouTube somewhere saying how dumb it is. And they literally cut every time I ever said his name wrong. And it just goes, and it's me because they're make because yeah they got no they've got free time and making fun of me was worth it so remember it's his name is Bo awesome did Bo you all is. yeah now the Cami band obviously are amazing musicians obviously they are um did you happen to notice that one of them with long black hair playing a guitar yeah. is smiling yes very joyfully smiling but with the makeup it's a little creepy yes. I want you to remember that person, not, not his name or not anything else. Just remember that smile. It's going to come back later. I'm not going to tell you why. So that was your first iteration. Baby metal. Give me chocolate on the Stephen Colbert show. Now there are multiple give me chocolates. There's the original video. There's a show that they played in Japan in the Budokan where there's like a hundred foot Buddha behind them. Yeah. And they're playing. It's, incredible now that's the phenomenon and the level of cuteness that people latched on to in 2015 they played some shows in japan and they were so popular by then they were selling out 20,000 seat arenas mm. the level of crowd participation i know you've seen some of the different um bands when they do the crowd crowd interactions where they have the wall of death or they have mm -hmm. like the circle runs you've seen? Yes. On the next video, we're going to take you to what it's like to see baby metal live in Japan and the level of crowd love for these three ladies. At the time, three young girls. I have a question for you. Okay. Um, and it's not relevant to what you're saying, but it's a question about... Um, so they started this at a very young age, but how young did they actually get together before they made their first appearance? Uh, they were together around 2010. They were working in this production academy, this performance academy together as part of different pop ensembles. Yeah. And the three of them were chosen for this particular venture, this idea, and it just took off. There was something about Sue Metal being able to sing metal and the two dancers working with her in a way that would translate when normally it would just be pop. So this is all the way back in 2010 when they officially got together, the three of them. But they became what we now know as baby metal 
in around 2014 is when they really became the identity with the cami band in the back. So they really had been working on the on their own little craft there for about four years before they made that public appearance. Okay, that's interesting to know because you can see how well polished they are. On oh stage. yeah, as young They're as they really, are. Oh yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, it was very impressive to see them on stage, and you see all of the like, even with Sue. Just say the singer, or you could say the the dancers, and I'll fill in names until you learn them. It takes time. Singer. Until the singer. Sue so, Metal. Sue Metal. So she, her steps were different than the other two. Yes, because she has to hold a mic. Exactly. But what I noticed is like when all of the, the steps went together, like they all kind of like, like interlaid together very well. So even though it wasn't the same step that she was doing, the other two were doing it well. And, and, and I, I'll be honest, I paid more attention to them than I did the band. When they cut the camera to the band, then I started like picking up on little things. But honestly, it was like the most cutest, stinking cute thing I've ever seen. And like, it's, I just want to hold them and hug them and like, just, oh, you're so cute and pinch the cheeks and all of that. It's, that's like the mom and me just wanting to like play dress up. <laughs> people have been trying, people have tried and failed numerous times to try to separate the three and say that Sue Metal's the singer, so therefore she's the singer, and so therefore she has all this talent, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. The level of choreography that is done is masterful to do what they do. And when I say they do it night in and night out, and that level of energy you see does not stop for two and a half hours. Like they don't, every, every, every iteration of them is huge. Now, there is a giant rabbit hole of that time when you can go back to the videos from 2015 and 2016 and see them in their first identity as who they are, that young, cute baby metal and the phenomenon they came. There's like 20 videos you could check and go into. And that's cool. In fact, you can even go before that iteration and see them, the three of them, doing metal, but the videos look kind of K-pop, J-pop, mixed in yeah. a little bit more hello kitty kind of vibe and then they yeah. went to like okay let's just go metal with it and they went so far so metal i will tell you and you don't have to look for this but there is a video where they where sue metal gets crucified on a cross oh live in concert yeah why because japan doesn't look at religion the way we do so when you want to go full metal Ozzy was like, holy shit, man. Like, so, yeah. So, yeah, I even did you the Ozzy. You too well, my friend. I, I do, yeah. Okay, so, so, yeah. So, that's the first introduction. The first video. The next one, this was just the, the phenomenon that caught everyone's face. The video that made it go viral was when they were on TV here in America, and it just went global. Now, I'm going to show you the next video we're gonna about to watch on the next video. I'm going to show you the immensity of the love of the Fox God nation with these, these young ladies in Japan in front of 20,000 people. It's insane. Are you ready? Yo, I, yeah. All, all right. So that, that's the next video. So you guys have to wait till she comes back. I don't control this stuff. I'm just here that any mistakes that she would made, everyone knows, are my fault. And I wish someone had been here for me when I messed all this up the first time for myself. And with that, that's it. All right. So you guys, you know what? Live your lives fabulously. We're going to see you on the next one. I'm going to wear my tiara. Because <laughs> I, I, I feel like royalty. I'm going to do the way. All right. We'll see you all later.